obviously very concerning developments, but also I'm very proud of the Royal Navy and the role that they played in keeping British assets, British shipping safe. Uh, we are continuing to monitor the situation very, very carefully. And do you think there is a case for increasing security? We are constantly monitoring the security and constantly keeping under review the kind of security that we need uh, to keep uh, British shipping safe. Well, this is a, a black day for British diplomacy. I mean, we have brilliant diplomats. It, it adds to our strength as a country that we have what many people think is the best diplomatic network in the world. And I and many staff in the Foreign Office are incredibly dismayed, even angry, about what happened because he should have had better support than he had. And Did he have the right support from Boris Johnson? Well, you know, he has given his reasons why he thought his position was not tenable but uh, you know when diplomats are doing their job when they are some of our very best diplomats in some of our most important embassies then they're entitled to support. How close are you to making a replacement for Sir Kim? In terms of the new ambassador in Washington uh, that is a decision for the Prime Minister alone it's not for people shouting from the sidelines to tell her what to do and she will decide what's right in the national interest I know that she would want someone who is experienced and appropriate for the role um, and the timing is something that she will obviously have to think about carefully. So she is definitely going to appoint a replacement before she leaves Downing Street? The decision about the replacement for Sir Kim is a decision for the Prime Minister alone and that includes the timing uh, who is the most experienced, capable person. This is our top diplomatic post around the world. And I think the lesson that we need to take away from this as a country is that when our diplomats do their job, uh, tell the unvarnished truth as they see it, we should be